Hello guys, I think I have a good one for you. I've been working on Puma Punku. I got a book in the mail called The Stones of Tiwanaku. It's available for free to view online. I'll share a link in the description. The book represents a tremendous amount of research by the authors Jean-Pierre Protzen and Stella Nair about the stones at Puma Punku. It also includes research on similar andesite stones from the surrounding area of Tiwanaku. The book is full of fantastic architectural blueprints on the stones. One of the concepts that stood out to me initially was the idea that the red sandstone platform in the center would have been mirrored on both sides. The details would have been uh, the same on both sides and we're only looking at half of what should have been there. Looking at the blueprints of the sandstones and their markings, I wondered if I wasn't looking at a floor plan. And I wondered if the large andesite stone seen here was a piece of a wall. Then using that piece as a common wall height, I filled out the blueprints on all three sandstone platforms. I think there may have been side entrances to each of the structures, but I'm still working that out. Right now, I'm just wanting to see what the rough shape of the structure may have looked like. I'm basing this solely on one andesite stone and the idea that the red sandstones represent a foundation. So when I got to this point, I realized that I needed to see what the larger structure it sat on may have looked like. So I spent some time mapping out the stepped or terrace structure beneath the stones. It took quite a bit of time to figure out what was going on, and I just did a general idea of what it may look like. I haven't gotten into all the particular details just yet. I believe the side channels were used for rainwater runoff. The terrace structure has evidence of drainage being considered as it was being built. The whole complex carefully considers water. I do not believe that there would have been standing water at all times as if it was a moat. I believe it acted more like a gutter or drainage ditch. This side of the structure seemed a little unfinished or torn apart in my opinion. There also seemed to be another foundation or wall extending out. But thinking of this in terms of symmetry, I matched the terrace from the other side. That may or may not be a correct assumption. I need to consider the details of the terrace more, but this gives me enough to go back and continue working on the stones. Going back to the sandstone platform and thinking about the structure, I, I was thinking about the gateways. The book describes a number of gateways. It also provides architectural blueprints with dimensions. I sized these as they were shown in the book without making any adjustments. This is their gateway one. There are these inset slots on the sides of the gateway that align with the lines in the foundation. Moving over to the center sandstone platform, this is their gateway number three. This area on the gateway looks like it was interrupted mid-construction with the details that begin on this side and then are seen in rougher stages going right to left. Again, the inset notches align with the foundation markings. Moving over to the last sandstone platform, this is their gateway number two. And again, the inset notches line up with the foundation markings. And all of these gateways have similar opposite side designs. Finally, the book gives the dimensions of the gateway of the sun. I think it could have originally been positioned here. Currently, it is located where it was found tipped over and cracked off in the distance. I'm going to duplicate the gateway of the sun and put it over on the existing sandstone side. It does have an opposite side that matches the other gateways. The markings that you see, the notches that you see on the front of the gateway to the sun match with the foundation markings on the other side of the platform. 
I'm going to bring back the rough architecture to go along with the gateway positions. I'm going to show this with a gabled roof similar to later Incan construction. For now, I need to do more research about this. The roof may have been constructed using mountain grass called Ichu that is commonly used for roofs in the area. I need to do more research on the roof, but I want to turn now to the work of Alexei Varanich. I'll give you a link to his work in the description. He proposed this as an interior configuration. There were drawings of this design in the book Stones of Tiwanaku as well. And so I used the drawings to rough out the interior configurations. I believe these structures could have been used as a resting place for the dead elite of Tiwanaku. The interiors probably would have been brightly painted and adorned with gold and jewels. I'm going to continue to model out the interiors of the structures. There are additional stones to consider. Uh, I think there are side entrances and there's definitely smaller gateways to consider. I would like to know your thoughts about where I'm at at this point. Also, please remember to check out the book Stones of Tiwanaku. The link is in the description. One final note, I wanted to say that I noticed I went over a thousand subs on Thanksgiving and I wanted to thank you. I'm not going to make a big deal of numbers, but I wanted to let you know that I saw that and I really appreciate the support.